Welcome back to another Wife Screw Review. Today we have Meek Mill, the King of L's, uh, Dream Traces 4. As we all know, Meek Mill took more L's than anybody this past year. And finally, we get the long-awaited Dream Traces 4. Um, it's 14 tracks long. It's got a ton of features on there. Uh, we got Tory Lanez, Don Q, Quavo, um, Nicki, Young Thug, 21 Savage, YFM Lucci, Lil Snoop, French Montana. Uh, so there's a ton of features on here. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, this project, to be honest with you, it's nothing special um, or different than any of the other projects he's put out. Uh, the content's still the same, you know, that street shit, that drug shit, just being braggadocious and flossy and talks about his Rolex and his rake throughout this entire project. So you're going to get a lot of that standard meat mill bragging BS. Um, I mean, I was hoping for, hoping for something a little different than than what we got, you know, with everything that's going on. I would hope you would have kind of talked about it or been a little more introspective on this, you know, because, I mean, he's took so many L's. He's got a shit ton of stuff to talk about or just to go in about. Or just for him to just be OD emotional and really just spaz on the track so you can kind of feel it. Well, we didn't get that. I mean, it doesn't mean the project was terrible. I mean, there are some standout moments on here. Um, my favorite tracks, uh, Tony Story 3. Wow, the production on that, it's just a very simple beat, but it works. It's a dope beat, and he absolutely snapped on it. It's just a street tale, you know, a real in-depth story uh, about some shit that's going on in the streets. We got Blessed Up. I believe that's track two. It's, that's, a dope, that's a dope track. The production on it is fire. He came on, he did his thing. Um, another track I like, I think it could have been a lot better, was um, Blue Notes. The production on that was absolutely bananas the strings the whole uh jazz blues type feel that it had going on if he would just slow down and just stop yelling this track would have been just perfect but he's got to learn to switch up his flow that's the one thing with meek you get the same flow same delivery all the time if he switched up his flow it would make things a lot more interesting and probably make you want to listen to him more i mean because honestly like just listening to his stuff it's the same thing over and over so he's got to do something, whether he gets more experimental with the beats, like I said, just experience. I think he should just work on his delivery of flow and stop yelling like that high pitched yelling on the tracks. It gets annoying very fast. Um, some of the worst tracks on here, I would have to say, was Offended uh, featuring Young Thug and 21 Savage and Frozen featuring um, <laughs> his girl Nikki and Lil Uzi Vert. Um, those are two of the worst tracks. Just the, the bars that Nikki spent on Frozen were just absolutely just struggle bars all the way through um Lil Uzi Vert you know what you're getting with him just some auto-tuning crooning mumbling whatever that is just terrible um as far as the features go there were some standout features on here Don Q I like his verse he's some somebody we definitely need to watch out for because that boy can spaz when he wants to spaz on the track so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in the future um shockingly Quavo. I actually, this is the second time I've like, uh, like in an album review that I've actually liked the verse by Quavo. He had a dope verse on that T.I. Um, Us or Else album, and then on this Meek Mill project, he puts out a, he has another dope verse, so I can't knock Quavo. If the verse is dope, the verse is dope. Um, so the features, yeah, there was some, oh, I can't forget, Lil Snoop. Rest in peace, Lil Snoop. On that outro, he absolutely spazzed. It was like, crazy that was probably one of the dopest features on here or verses i should say but he definitely went in rest in peace to him because that was fire um the french montana we could have did without uh, overall i mean it it wasn't good but it wasn't bad i mean it has some standout moments it isn't something i'm going to constantly go back and replay and it has a ton of replay value um i think you know the, a lot of the stuff it was, it's just it's too much of the same thing Personally, I'm going to give this album a chicken noodle soup, or this mixtape, I'm sorry, a chicken noodle soup. It's just the average, a few standout moments, a lot of filler, a lot of stuff that's just not memorable whatsoever. Um, that's just my opinion. Don't kill me. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what we should review next. You know, um, hit us up on social media. All the links will be below. Our rating scale is below. You know, like this video, share this video, comment, subscribe, and peace. I'll catch you next time.